city, Los Angeles, California. It ranks first in the country in a number of things, among them land area and automobiles. One of the biggest areas here is occupied by the University of California at Los Angeles. It's situated on 411 acres in West Los Angeles. UCLA has a student body of 29,000, a faculty of 2,000 distributed among its 71 departments and 14 schools and colleges. Since 1945, a $160 million building program has been underway, the largest on any campus in the United States. One of those expansions concerns the library. With over two million books, the university has the largest collection of any college in the world. UCLA is a place where young people prepare for a successful future. The goal is worthwhile, but the path is long and hard. Some try to find an easier way. When it's illegal, I go to work. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. We were working the day watch out of Fraud's division, forgery section. The boss is Captain Frankel. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We checked in for work at 9 a.m. For the past two and a half minutes, Bill appeared to be testing the construction qualities of the squad room furniture. What's the matter? Something wrong with the furniture? No, Joe, there's nothing wrong with the furniture. Isometrics, they're called. Good old dynamic tension. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Do your isometrics three minutes a day. You don't have to do anything else. Is that so? Yes, Joe, it's so. It's the tension. One muscle working dynamically against the other that does the trick. You don't get much exercise, do you, Joe? Oh, I get out and bowl when I have a chance. Well, that's nice. I don't suppose you do any jogging. Oh, no, I don't have much time for that. But you've got time to sit around and get flabby. That's why you ought to try isometrics, Joe. Doesn't take any of your valuable time. Now, watch this. See? That didn't take any time. A few seconds here, a few seconds there. That's all it takes, Joe. No time at all. You've got muscles like bands of solid steel. That's amazing. You've been doing these isometrics long, have you? Just starting. What's the matter, Gannon? Something wrong with that chair? Uh, no, sir, Captain. Just exercising. This might give you a little more. Theft and forgery. Woman calling herself Sarah Phillips passed over $3,000 worth of bad paper last week. Stolen payroll checks. Yes, sir. The checks were stolen from the Monument Movie Studios. Phillips' woman works there. All right, we'll go have a talk with her. Yeah, do that. And maybe you can help find whoever it was that stole her driver's license and her credit cards. Yes, sir. And who's been forging her signature to these checks? a.m. We drove over to Sarah Phillips' apartment on Harper Avenue, just below Sunset Boulevard. Yes. You're Miss Phillips, Sarah Phillips? Yes, that's right. Police officers, Miss Phillips. This is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. It's about those checks. That's right. Please come in. Can I get you anything? Coffee, orange juice? No, thank you. Please sit down. This thing has made me a complete wreck. I'm so nervous. Yes, ma'am, we understand. I just can't get over this. It's never happened to me before. I mean, having my name used makes me feel so responsible, so guilty. Someone stole my identification cards, my driver's license, my credit cards, everything. Yes, ma'am. Now, when did you first notice they were missing? Just the last couple of days. Stores all over town have been calling me. Every time that phone rings, I want to dig a hole in the ceiling. I know it's going to be some place of business calling that's been swindled by somebody using my name. And you're employed by Monument Studios, is that right? I've been doing commercials mostly in TV, but I've just signed a seven-year contract with Monument. Do you have any idea where or when your identification and credit cards might have been stolen? No idea. They were all in my purse, but I have dozens of credit cards, so I didn't notice that a few were gone. And unless I'm getting a ticket, I never look at my driver's license. What a mess this is. 
My roommate's been calling me public enemy number one ever since this thing started. Is your roommate here? I don't want to get her involved. She didn't have anything to do with this. We didn't say she did. Mary has a regular job. She works in a bank. That's her picture. What's her full name? Mary Hargrave. How long have you known her? You act like you really suspect her. How long have you known her? About six months. Oh, she's a nut, but she's a real good roommate. Is it possible she could have taken the things from your purse? That's what I mean. You suspect her. Absolutely not. Mary just kids about being money crazy. Actually, she's a very religious person. Is that so? Why, just last week she joined the Ming Dynasty Crusaders. The Ming Dynasty Crusaders? Yes, the MDC. She's very devout. It's the third religion she's had since I've known her. The third in six months? She's extremely devout, but she has trouble deciding what to be devout about. She'll stick with Ming Dynasty, though. What makes you so sure? She's made a commitment. She went out and bought herself a gong. <laughs> Ten twenty-five a.m. Sarah Phillips gave us a list of the various stores which had reported receiving the forged payroll checks. We drove out to talk to the victims. The first one on the list was the Beautific Boutique on Santa Monica Boulevard. May I help you? Yes, we'd like to talk to the manager if we could. Oh, Miss Tigley, she's in back. I'll get her. Thank you very much. That certainly is short. A little. I've got more material in my handkerchief than she has in her entire dress. I mean, you know me, Joe. I'm no prude, but really, can you imagine your mother wearing something like that? No, but then my mother's in her 70s. Yes, gentlemen? You wanted to see me? Angela Tigley. I'm the manager here. Yes, ma'am. We're police officers. We'd like to talk to you about a forged check. $240. I should have known better. I should have smelled something funny about a $240 sale. I should have known it was too good to be true from a size 10. Yes, ma'am. Can you describe the person who passed the check? A perfect size 10. I waited on her myself. Well, could you be a little more specific? What was her age, height, weight, the color of her hair? Oh, a brunette, shoulder length, page boy, no fall. Page boy, no fall? It was her own hair. She wasn't wearing a wig. She was about my height and weight. I'm also a 10. I'd say she was 25, maybe 26. How was she dressed? Pale blue blouse with gold piping. Navy blue miniskirt and thong sandals. I, I wouldn't bother writing all that down. How's that? That's what she wore when she came in. Yes, ma'am. When she walked out, she was wearing a brand new $240 outfit. Eleven fifteen a.m. We arrived at Platt's jewelry store. Sidney Platt, like Angela Tigley, had accepted a bad check. He had been cheated out of a lady's diamond wristwatch, two gold bracelets, and a pair of diamond earrings. Total five hundred and thirty-eight dollars plus tax. His description of the woman tallied with the one given us by Angela Tigley. Eleven thirty-five a.m. We checked back with Sarah Phillips to find out if she knew anyone who would fit the description we had been given by the two victimized store managers. Yes, I know somebody who fits that description, but it's impossible. Size ten, brunette, shoulder length hair, twenty-five, twenty-six years old. Twenty-five. My roommate, Mary. That picture's about two years old, but her hair's longer now. But Mary wouldn't do something like this. Why, because she plays the gong? We'll have to take this photograph along with us, Miss Phillips. It'll be returned after we finish our investigation. All right. Do you have any samples of her handwriting? Yes, the book by the phone. That's her address book. We'll have to take this along with us, too. It'll be returned. What do I tell Mary if she notices her picture and her address book are gone? What time do you expect her today? As soon as she gets off work. She'll be home by 5 o'clock. All right, these will be back by 4. Now, we'd appreciate it if you didn't say anything to her about this until we've completed our investigation. Oh, don't worry about that. I don't want to make things any worse than they are. I just know Mary isn't guilty. She's just too nice. Well, if she's that nice, she isn't guilty. Yes. And if she's guilty, she's not that nice. <laughs> 11.55 a.m., we showed Mary Hargrave's photograph to Angela Tigley. We asked her if she recognized her as the forger. Miss Tigley said there was a resemblance, but she couldn't be certain without seeing the girl in person. 12.15 p.m., we showed the photograph to the victimized jeweler, Sidney Platt. He was also in doubt. He said that the woman in the two-year-old photograph might have been the same person who passed the check in his store, but he couldn't be positive. 1.05 p.m., we took Mary Hargrave's address book to question documents section. Roy Kaiser compared the handwriting in the book to the signatures on the forged payroll checks. Well, how's it look to you, Roy? You got no make here. You're sure? That's what they pay me to be sure. No chance, Joe. Whoever filled out this address book didn't sign these checks, all right? 
Well, thanks, Roy. Any time, boys. One thing I can tell you. What's that? The girl who signed these checks? Yeah. She's a southpaw. You sure of that? They just don't listen. Yes, Bill, I'm sure. The girl who filled out the address book is right-handed. The one who signed the checks is a lefty. Well, that's a help. We also serve who only sit and wait. Oh, we never doubted that for a second. Roy, give us an educated guess. How many left-handed women do you think there are in Los Angeles? At least 100,000. You know, it's simply amazing how this man cracks our cases wide open for Fantastic. us. Fantastic, and it really doesn't seem fair. No. He does all the work, we get all the glory. Get out of here, I got work to do. So do we. We've got 100,000 suspects to round up. My money's on you, Hawkshaw. You will accomplish that by tea time. <laughs> Frauds Division Friday. Yes, that's right. What's your name? I see. Where? Well, when? Well, okay, how will we know you? Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Okay, we'll be there. What's up? Somebody wants to tell us who's been passing those stolen payroll checks. Who's someone? Five foot ten, brown hair, blue eyes, brown beard, no name. Oh, him. Where's the meat? Edendale Cemetery, the mausoleum. <laughs> At 2.10 p.m., we returned Mary Hargrave's photograph and address book to Sarah Phillips. Then we drove to the Edendale Cemetery in West Hollywood to meet the anonymous informant. You must be the men. We're the men. Give me a sign. You Friday? That's right, and this is Bill Gannon. Now, what's your name? Thompson. Thompson and Val Hallen. I come here to commune with the dead. We're all dead, you know. You said on the phone you know who's been passing stolen payroll checks. Best coffee in town. Make it myself. Yeah. Now I know who's been passing the checks. I wish I didn't. Why is that? Well, she's not in it by herself. I mean, she'd never do it by herself. It's those flake outs she's been running with. I mean, they put her up to swiping the payroll checks and those IDs from the studio. She used to work out there as a secretary. I used to work out there myself. I was a hack. What's that? I was a hack. You know, I wrote bad movie scripts, bad TV scripts. Yeah, it's strictly for the loot and didn't make much of that. But I'm out of that scene now. Knock, uh, knock cement. What do you do now for a living? Well, for a living, man, I, I live. Period. I meditate, ponder the universe, I commune with the dead. What do you do for money? Well, I'm still on unemployment. Now and then I collect a residual on an old TV script. You writing now? I told you, Cannon. I'm spending most of my time thinking. You know, most people don't realize that writing is the easiest part. It's the thinking that takes time. It's that period of creative gestation that separates the artist from the hack, the living from the dead. Tell us about the ex-secretary who's been passing the stolen checks. Sandra. She's a beautiful person. Just beautiful. When I left the studio to devote myself to serious work, she kept on out there as a secretary. We moved to a cabin up in Oak Leaf Canyon. It was great for a while. But she became friends with a bunch of the canyon creeps, especially Ralph and Dixie. They're a total waste. And a couple of weeks ago, she left me. She said I was destroying her ability to paint. She paints. She's very good. She said I was stifling her inspiration. So now she lives with Dixie and Ralph and that communal pigsty they share with the other bad news characters up and down the canyon. And it's that fat, dumb Dixie who talked her into clout in those payroll checks and those IDs. You know, even if Sandra were starving, she'd never steal for herself. But they brainwashed her. You know, they convinced her that she owed it to her friends to steal for their sake. Why are you telling us all this? Because I love her. And I want her back. I know that sooner or later, with or without my help, you'll catch up with them. I guess I was hoping if I helped you, maybe you could help her. Maybe you could put her on probation and return her to me. That'll be up to the court to decide. I dig. But you could put in a word if you wanted to. You could tell the judge that she's not a felonious person, that she only did what she did for her friends, the leeches. You could tell him that she has a man who loves her and wants her back. Where's this Sandra now? Well, they all went up the coast somewhere day four yesterday. I think they're living alfresco up near Big Sur. They're supposed to be back at the end of the week. I'm keeping her cat for her until she gets back. Anybody else involved in the operation besides this Sandra? Well, 
Sandra's the number one patsy. Or she swiped the checks, she passes them, but they got a three-way go in the tape. Sandra and the two leeches, you know, Dixie and Ralph. A couple of real parasites. They can't even steal for themselves. Do you have a picture of this, Sandra? No, not on me. There's one back at the pad. And I pray to God she understands my motive in doing this. I hope she sees that it was love and not spite. She will see that, won't she? I wouldn't know. Now tell me, this Sandra, you two living together, is that the idea? Don't you think we should, man? She's my wife. Legal. With a license to back it up. 3.25 p.m., we accompanied Blake Thompson to a cabin up in Oak Leaf Canyon. Powerful, isn't it? Really turns you on. Well, it blows your mind, doesn't it? Sure does mine. What is it? But what are you seeing? Well, that's a real nice frame. No, no, don't be self-conscious. Let yourself out. Hold nothing back. Don't be uptight about it. Just simply respond. Well, there's a big yellow thing down in the corner, and there's a purple swirl in the middle, and a lot of brown drops all over it. OK, now add it up and tell me what it says. Yellow and purple and brown. That's her. It's a self-portrait. It's Sandra. Sandra. Pretty girl. This isn't the only picture you have of her, is it? I mean, this is good, but we could use a photograph. Got one. Hang tough and I'll get it. I don't think it's as good of her myself. It's in black and white. Sleeps right on top of her picture. This is Sandra's cat, Toby. And this is Sandra. You seem like a bright guy, Thompson, well-educated. Tell me something. You like living like this? No, it's the only way to go. All an artist needs is pen and paper. Everything else is just trivia. Doesn't this mess depress you a little? Does it matter whether Tolstoy or Dickens slept in a clean bed when they wrote War and Peace or Oliver Twist? Maybe not to everybody, Thompson, but I'll lay you odds it mattered to someone. Who? Mrs. Tolstoy and Mrs. Dickens. April 13th, 1.15 p.m. We had just returned from lunch. Frauds Division, Friday. Yeah? What's that address? Uh-huh. Is that up near your place? Yeah, I got it. OK, we'll be right out. That was Thompson. His wife just got back. 1.35 p.m. We drove to the address Thompson had given us. It was another rundown house a little farther up in Oak Leaf Canyon. Don't inhale or you'll be higher than Apollo 8. Hey there. Hey there. I know you. Police officers. Oh, you know them. <laughs> oh, my floating. You're not going to believe this, Dixie. But the heat just waltzed into my dream. Mine, too. Joe. Monument Studios, Sarah Phillips payroll checks. Driver's license, credit cards all belong to the Phillips girl. Ralphie. Yeah, Dixie. What's it mean when I see the same thing you see? I think it means we're in big trouble. Where's the Thompson woman? Who? Oh, Sandra. Well, isn't she here? She went off with what's his name? You know, the lump that she's married to. I mean, we just don't stop us from floating, though, huh? No chance. Because all I want to do is just float, float. And float. Me too. You will, right down to Central Jail. 2.45 p.m. We booked the suspects for violation of Section 470 PC, forgery. Bill filled out a request for an all-points bulletin for Blake and Sandra Thompson. Cross Division, Gannon. Well, where you been? Yeah, we've been looking for you. Sure, we went there. We went by your place about a half an hour ago, too. OK, I understand. Right. 10 minutes. That was Thompson. His wife is with him. They're at the cabin waiting for us. Yeah. Having a last cup of coffee. Best in town. 
No, not this time. He's been watering it down. He was crying. It was 3.05 p.m. when we arrived at Thompson's cabin. All right. Want a cup of coffee? It's the best in town. No, thanks. Sergeant Friday, Officer Gannon, this is my wife, Sandra. I couldn't let you bust her with the rest of those creeps. I had to talk to her one last time. I had to tell her why I did it. We better get going. Wish me luck, sweetheart. Wednesday, May 10th, a month went by. Bill and I had to appear in court later that day to testify at the Thompson trial. We were reviewing the case. Sergeant? Yeah, can I help you? No, sir. Not anymore. You don't recognize me? Blake Thompson. Well, what happened to you? I woke up. I realized that Saunders leaving me for Ralph and Dixie wasn't really a step down for her. I used to say they never did anything constructive that they lived like pigs. Then I took a look at the way I lived. They were just more honest than I was. They'd lie around with their pot and pills, getting their kicks. I was no better with my meditation and my great unwritten books. I don't blame Sandra for splitting. In these past few weeks, while she's been out on bail, we've had time to talk about things that count, the things that really matter. I don't know if I can write anymore. I've been Tolstoy in my brain for so long now that I'm not even sure I can write bad movies, let alone good books. It was because of what's happened to Sandra that I decided to turn off, tune out, and drop back in. Partly, it was really seeing myself for the first time through her eyes that straightened me out. It's not so hard to look like a pig and live like a bum when pigs and bums are the only ones around. But taking an honest, hard look at yourself really shakes you up. I'm working on a movie script. Nobody ordered it. I'll take my chances on the open market. My agent thinks it's pretty good. The studio might be interested. Movies don't have to be bad, you know. It's not movies that are hack. It's hacks who are hacks. I was a hack. Maybe I'll always be one. But I'll never be a pig again. And, well, I just wanted to stop by and say thanks. The trial starts pretty soon, doesn't it? A few minutes now. Sandra's out in the hall. Would you say hello to her? Sure. The courthouse is a couple of blocks away. Shall we walk over? Together? We don't mind if you don't. you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On May 10th, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of forgery, which is punishable by imprisonment in the state prison for not less than one year, nor more than 14 years or by imprisonment in the county jail for not more than one year. However, due to the circumstances surrounding her involvement, sentence was suspended. The suspects who were the instigators of the crime were tried and convicted of forgery.